Hi everybody and thanks for joining us today. My name is Stan Duda, CEO with Alpine Consulting based out of Schaumburg, Illinois. We're an IBM Premier Business Partner. Our focus is around uh, risk, threat, fraud, and compliance. Our discussion for today is really going to be focused around mortgage fraud and compliance. With me today, I've got Boris Koshovsky with IBM. Boris. Hello, I'm Boris Koshovsky with uh, IBM Industry Solutions. Um, on March 20th, we launched the counter fraud uh, management solution, and today Stan and I are going to talk to you about how we took the solution for mortgage fraud specifically to address mortgage fraud compliance uh, f for that specific business. So IBM's done a great job of investing in developing more than just a point-based solution. They've actually developed an entire platform that works across vertical industry, but has developed specific key models to address those vertical organizations' needs. So. Fundamentally, they've got the ability to detect, to respond, to discover, and to investigate. All key components of it. So today we're going to talk specifically about the models, though, and in, the, in this case, uh, counter-fraud management for mortgage fraud. So Boris, help me to understand, I know that there are two key models, and, and they, they involve uh, fraud discovery and uh, underwrite, you know, so specifically for appraisal fraud and then for underwriting fraud. So tell me a little bit, just highlight uh, some of the appraisal fraud areas. You know, Stan, you bring up a great point. Um, IBM have invested in over $24 billion of, of software uh, over the last few years. What we've done to go after this market, what we've really done is, just like you said, we've taken these different solutions and, and March 20th, uh, earlier this year, we launched Counter Fraud Release 1.5. And the whole concept of Release 1.5 was to go after exactly what you just said. All right, how do I ingest the data? How do I build the rules? How do I uh, um, do predictive analytics? How do I work alerts? And then how do I show the business what all of my dashboards are and what, what my efficiencies and effectiveness are around the business? All right, so with Counter Fraud 1.5, Specifically today, like you said, what we're going to do is we'll go through those pieces and parts about how we detect, how we ingest the data, how we process the, the alerts, and then how we move them into case management specific for um, money uh, for, for the mortgage industry. So with appraisal fraud, I know that uh, some of the areas in particular, um, things like condo conversions, uh, new construction, uh, sale price greater than list price, um, there's, there's others as well, but but here's, here's the, uh, the basic concept. Here's what happened. Um, we went through the boom of the mortgage crisis, and uh, as we went through the mortgage crisis, all of the SARS or the suspicious activity reports really just skyrocketed. Over the last couple of years, we've seen that leveled off. But still, those three, four, five fraud scenarios contained, uh, maintained to be the lead uh, of what's happening in that marketplace. All right, again, application fraud, people are still cheating. The industry has changed a little bit now to address the fact that, you know what, we got to do a better due diligence on what type of applicant, you know, what kind of data comes in from the applicants. And then again, uh, appraisal fraud, loan fraud, like you spoke about. So Stan, in support of some of the, uh, uh, the facts and figures that I gave you about, you know, where the mortgage industry has gone through the years, this diagram actually shows us how FinCEN tracks through since 2001 through 2012 the, more, the SAR filing activity and the details of each one of those. Sure, so, sure. So we're able to see in this diagram the fact that, you know, again, the industry is still um, um, subjected to the compliance piece uh, com components and how it has changed. But again, you know, we talked about the fact that, um, you know, there's still an issue and, and then you still have to stay compliant. You're right. I mean, I know back in 2005 that number was about 138,000 filings of suspicious activity reports. And in 2012, that number has dropped to nearly 9,600 on an annual basis, a tremendous drop. Absolutely. And surely it's difficult to explain all of that with, with simple justification. But other than to say, it would, it would seem apparent that it's likely that suspicious activity reports simply aren't being filed in, in, in compliance. So Stan, now let's go through a quick workflow of how we do this. Sure, All that right? sounds great. So you've got an applicant that comes in to do a mortgage application. So we we ingest all of that data into, let's call it a data repository. Okay. All right, so this is applicant data, 
uh, all of the different information that comes in from the application on the customer. All right. Yep. We bring that in into what we call entity analytics. All right. This is where we figure out what the relationships between people and places and things are, uh, and then even on the entity itself. Yeah, it's so, the who's who, who knows who, exactly. and how are they related. All right. Okay. So we bring in all this internal data, as we call it, into the solution, and then we also bring external data. Okay? Very good. So public information. So yeah, example. so an example would be if you're going to pull LexisNexis data, if you're going to pull data from other sources that you subscribe to, or data that is publicly available. So here's an example. All right? What we bring in here is the appraiser database. Okay. All right. We bring in all of the, the realtor's listings. Every realtor every listing that's out there in the market is also um, uh, brought in. Okay. So we bring in all of this external data so, so we can figure out who the applicant is, what all of the parties are that are involved in the whole mor mortgage workflow process. Okay. All right. So Very we good. know everyone involved from the bank, the lender, the applicant, uh, the appraiser who reviewed the, uh, uh, the property, uh, and who listed the property. So in here, in the Entity Analytics database, we know everybody that's involved in the process. Once we bring all this data in, what happens then is we run it into what we call our rules engine. And predict them. All right, in here, what we do is we do multiple things. All right, we run it through the business rules. Earlier, we, we spoke about uh, applicant, um, the different fraud scenarios that right, we have. Right, right, the pre-configured models, exactly. right? Exactly, so we have the business rules in here. Okay. This is where the pre-configured models are for the different types of scenarios that we come out of the box for, for detecting mortgage fraud. Yep, so right. specifically the, the, uh, the appraisal fraud model is in there, exactly. uh, the underwriting fraud model is in there, but I think it's important that, that folks know also that the, the solution offers the ability to uh, custom develop and modify this. These are a starting point and have to be tailored to the risk model and compliance model that the that the organization itself uh, prescribes to. Absolutely, and that also varies, that's a great point, because it varies on what data you bring in from, from in here, and then what external data you bring in on top to complement how the business rules will work. Okay. So, out of the box, they will work great, but again, depending on what other data would they bring in, you know, or uh, at that institution, those could be modified by themselves, or you know, we can help them, or you can help them. Actually, you bet. With so it's not we're not coding, we're not creating something custom. We're actually just configuring. Correct. I think that's an important point. Correct. So now, this right here is the entity analytics data. Data. All right. It complements the rules. Then we also have predictive analytics. All right. On top of the business rules, we're now able to do predictive analytics more beyond just the basic rules or the business rules that say, hey, if this and that and that. All right. Yep. Once we do all of that, what we do is we push all of this out to case management. Okay. And we call that ACM. Yep. Advanced all case right? management. Advanced case management. But in some examples or in some um, uh, scenarios, we may have to respond all the way back to that application origination system. So if there's a person sitting there, an applicant uh, ready, if a customer wants to deploy this in real time, guess what? We don't have to push it directly back to the back office to investigate uh, the mortgage application. We can push it directly back. And, and this and is one example of the, of the alerts, correct? Exa so this, exactly. And what we call this is real time detection. Okay. All right. So as the data comes in, this is preloaded already out there. We feed it in through the, the, uh, the rules and the, the uh, um, engine. And then real time, we can come back to the, the front end application and, uh, and impact that, that process flow. Sure. So okay. those alerts can go to a point of sale, into the case management, or, or text alerts, whatever the customer fundamentally needs, or even if it's integration into other systems that they may have. Yeah, and actually, most uh, there's a couple of systems here where lending applications uh, originate from. You bet. So we can interface directly back into that if we have That's to. That's a great point. But again, the, the majority of the work, because this is more compliance and fraud, you could come directly into case management and the people in the back office because this process takes a few days to work, so maybe real time isn't so important. But again, you know, we'll push everything in here and everything will be sitting in here for, uh, for the investigation. That makes good sense. So where do we go from the case management for us? All right, so in case management, what will happen is we can figure this based on the types of users and the types of roles that you have within the institution. Out of the box, the workflow is based on our FileNet technology. It is the industry eating ECM product in the market. So the example here is I'm an investigator. I show up to work every single morning, and guess what? 
my alerts are in here. So I can work the alerts, I can uh, um, process the alert, I can close an alert, or I can file a suspicious activity report that we'll talk a little sure. bit about so, here. So to that end, if, if I'm an investigator that's assigned a, a, a queue to work, I might be based on geographic location, it might be based on the type of mortgage, absolutely. it might be based on any number of factors, and those can be configured, correct? Yeah, absolutely, and actually it could even be based on certain type of a, a fraud scenario. So okay. Maybe some people are trained, depending on, again on the institution, we can do, create the workflow on the alert handling however they want. And I think that it's important for, the, for that folks uh, that are working on these alerts to know that you know there are other tools available to them. Tell us a little bit about ah, so the, the I2 piece for the link great, analysis. Great point. So we call this piece intelligent investigations. All right, And what it really does is the I2 brand you know that we put in the mix of the, the, the total solution, yeah. it allows the investigator to actually get a very good visual of all of the things that we spoke about in here. Who are the people that are involved or the, uh, the entities in the total transaction of a mortgage activity? Sure, right? and, and that could include more than just individuals. It could it could be documents, Absolutely. it could be addresses, it could be a whole plethora Absolutely. of different uh, entity types, if you will. Absolutely. So, so with uh, with the link analysis here, the investigator is able to figure out who all the parties are, where the anomalies are, and how to supplement or complement actually the, the alert that came out. Right. All right. So now, once I'm able to view this, now I have a better view of what's happening with this alert. Sure. And at this point, it would make sense of the, that the analyst can determine, hey, do I need to actually formula, form, formally open up a case, or do I create uh, a suspicious activity report and generate that automatically. Tell great, us a little bit about that. Great point. So what happens is, me as the investigator, I have two things to do. All right, I'm going to open up an, a, a case, and if I open up a case, I'm going to do two things. Over here is FinCEN. All right, what we have with case management, we have a direct interface built into FinCEN for SAR filing. Okay, so this is our SAR filing interface. So as the investigator works the alert, they will put all of their notes in here, what they saw in the I2 uh, visual link analysis, and then again, they will comment, make the comments in here, fill out the, the, the suspicious activity report, and with the submit button, they will file it directly into FinCEN. So we know that the, that the format in which those go, goes out are a standardized format. We can accelerate it. We reduce the burden on the analysts so that they can do more heavy lifting instead of the busy work, correct? Absolutely. Totally automated into FinCEN. Again, all we have to do is test with, with that uh, customer, but again, this interface is already pre-built within the solution. Very good. So, so once we do that, um, you know, tell me a little bit about you know, my metrics or dashboarding, both from an analyst point of view as well as even some of the executive team, because right, that's so an important yeah, thing great that point. others might want so to So here's see. what we do. Once, once the, uh, the alert or um, cases come in, alerts come in, uh, we've dispositioned, we have to manage the business. And we have to manage the business from two ways. The first thing we have to do is the efficiency and effectiveness of the investigators. You bet. I want better metrics on, exactly. on their performance, not to measure them in, in a harsh way, but how can I better facilitate their efficiency so that they can move on to That's higher right. value is items? Is Boris working the case for 10 minutes? Is Boris working the case for two days? So you can see all of that, how long does it take for a person to work an alert or a case, and, and if actually if a case is even hung up that somebody doesn't know. So you can see again the effectiveness and efficiency of the investigators themselves that are involved in the whole Sure, whole and that, so that's important for the analyst supervisors, their immediate supervisors. Right, so the second piece that we do there is also we manage the business. So now if I am a large nationwide uh, mortgage company uh, or a bank that's offering mortgages, I gotta manage my business. Where are my loans coming from? And where is my fraud coming from? That's a great right. point. So in here, what we're showing is the BI dashboards that will show you everything that, that you have related to more. So things like heat maps for specific uh, hot sectors that we Absolutely. may want to at least take a closer look at and determine, hey, is this an area from a risk profile perspective that fits into to our portfolio? Absolutely. So what we do there is we use Cognos dashboards, and again, we heat map the whole entire country and we show you where all the loans are coming from and guess what? We will show you exactly where the alerts are coming from. So you can see what type of alerts are in what parts of the country and specifically um, the details of those. Okay, so, so that might actually open up the door for me to determine 
kind of the, the, the types of fraud that are, be, that are trending, Absolutely. if you will. It also affords me the ability to, to say, hey, look, if I'm taking in a, a portfolio, if I'm, doing, if I'm buying mortgages from uh, another organization, uh, am, I ha am I seeing riskier portfolios? Perhaps? Here's the beauty of what we've done here. We've taken I2, Cognos, and Esri. So as you click on the, the heat map on that location, we will actually zoom into the property and show you exactly what that property is, where it's located, based on, again, the alert in the combination of I2, um, Cognos dashboards, and, and Google search, you know, combined sure, with the Azure sure. capability. So in this example, Stan, you know, on my uh, alert screen, I have a property in Michigan, okay? and the pin drop is in that location. So if I click in my uh, dashboard, in my Cognos dashboard on that pin, what it will actually do is with Esri and Google search, it will actually take me to that property location. So here's the example. Okay, so in this example, click on the heat map on the area that's, uh, let's say it's in the red area. In this case, it looks to be around Detroit area. Uh, once we're there, we can then zoom in further as shown on this graphic. I see a high level uh, view of, of the location of the property uh, and kind of surrounding properties. And then I get down to actually, on this next image, where it shows the uh, kind of a, a side reference uh, of the building itself or the property. That's right? a great point, Stan. And the reason why we went to this extent is because we want to be able to see the side of the house, not the top of the house. Where most people that go out and look at the property, uh, they'll probably do, again, a Google uh, a search from the top. We want to be able to see the property from the side just to see if this property is really inhabitable. In, in this example, you can see that this thing is boarded up. And again, we talked about the fraud cases in the examples. This property could be selling as a property that's, uh, that's livable, and it probably has two or three tenants. And in this case, it's boarded up, so there's nobody living in it. Great. So and again, Great. it supports the fact that we're able to drill all the way down to the minute detail on any type of an alert. Okay, and obviously that's meant to, to accelerate the cycle from an investigation point of view, but also to, to reduce the overall cost from an investigative point of view. Absolutely. Again, it's all one-stop shop. You can click on the Cognos dashboard, you can see your views, and again, you can use that in your supporting documentation for the case and the SAR filing. Fantastic. So basically you can create mashups and things of, other, of that nature, uh, pulling in even data sources from other, other databases that you may have in order to, to meet the needs that maybe your executive team is looking for, or even just uh, at, the, at the manager or even down to the, to the analyst level. Absolutely. You can even actually go pull reports by each of your regions, market, depending on how you're structured, so show them exactly what's happening with their business.